Hey guys, this is Elise. Welcome back to this project, Catholic Christian Friends for Intersectional Racial Healing. And in this project, for this video, I want to introduce my friend and one of the panelists, Micah. Hello. And so I, I, I'm excited to, to be part of this project. I, you know, for, for myself, I, I was raised uh, moving around from a military family and then when my dad got out of the military he moved around for for his work and i uh, you know when when you're primarily from appalachia though and i uh, when, when you grow up in really rural communities uh, you don't have a whole lot of diversity in your life and so it's not even so much about having intentional mindsets that are uh, prejudiced in any way it's just a straight out lack of exposure and when you don't have that kind of exposure in life, it's very easy to develop stereotypes, whether it's based off of media, family stories, whatever it may be. And it was particularly dangerous in my family because my family had a long history of not understanding and not having exposure or even having outright harmful mentalities. My great great grandfather was an officer in the KKK. And I, you know, my great grandmother would tell stories about as a little girl actually going to a meeting and I remember her saying uh, that well they were nice nice men they were nice to me and I remember my uncle uh, telling her well, well yeah because you were a little white girl I uh, you know to have that kind of history in her background um, you, you get very comfortable thinking well I'm not a racist because I'm not in the KKK I don't I don't think that I'm a, a better human being so, so therefore I don't I don't have any behaviors uh, that uh, are detrimental and when I was uh, in my early 20s, I, for a short time, was, was dating a young woman uh, from, a, from the minority community. And uh, things were going well for a couple months, and she decided she wanted to introduce me to her parents. And um, we literally got to her father's house, and she had failed to mention to him that I was white. And uh, I was not allowed to enter the home. And we were told that uh, we needed to end the relationship immediately. And... Uh, and we, we did, we, we stopped dating over it. And it was something that was hard because on, on one hand, I had my own self-righteousness tied up in it. Um, but then again, on the other, I was angry. I, and, and I was angry because I realized that, I, that his attitude and his behavior was probably developed off of something that was about his own past. And, and I don't know if, if for him there was personal rejection um, from, uh, from the white community. I don't know. And, and I never did find out. And it, it's something that's always really stuck in the back of my head. And not that I am at a loss for that particular relationship, but I just remember how strongly he felt about that. Yeah, I, I think that uh, the, other, the other reason I'm really excited about this project is right now, more, more so than any other time in my life, I, I see dialogue as being the only way that we can heal. I mean, we, we have a divide in our country right now. And you know, whenever you have a divide, it never remains the same. It, it either widens, and, and when something's widening, it's splitting, it can happen slowly over time, or it can happen in a snap of a moment. Um, or it can heal, that divide can, can close, but that happens slowly and it happens through intentionality. And, and so you know, one of the biggest hurdles I see to us being able to heal and to be able to bring people together uh, is to be able to get past our, our own echo chambers, um, being stuck in our own experiences, uh, being stuck in what we think we know, uh, and really also abandoning our lingo, our, our political rhetoric, letting all that go in being open to talking to people who disagree with us and being cognizant of the fact that we're talking to people who believe differently, to be able to do it in terms that maybe even we're not used to using. If, if we're able to do that, and, and for me with what I do professionally today, I, I, I work in the justice space. I, I work in, in economic opportunity and economic mobility and, and doing it with, with the government. If we can talk in those terms, that's where the healing opportunity is. So I'm really excited to be part of this project. Micah, thank you so much for sharing your bit of your story. And guys, I'm so excited to have you all involved and stay tuned for seeing more of Conversation with Micah and our friends. Um, with that, we close this video. God bless.